it is my pleasure to welcome our next uh, speaker, who's uh, Michel Gödert. Uh, he's no stranger to this audience. Um, Michel is a group leader in the neurobiology division, and um, he was uh, a former head of the neurobiology division. Michel did seminal work with Aaron in the 80s, uh, discovering the component of paired helical filament in Alzheimer's disease, the protein tau. Michel's work has been focused on tau ever since, so much so that you can really summarize decades of work, work in three letters, tau. <laughs> Michel knew uh, Aaron really well and was, I will get them for you. Michel knew Aaron really well and actually when I joined LMB, they were still talking to each other almost um, every day. And I had the privilege of, oh, this is the one talk, Michel. Yes, I had the privilege of joining a few um, of, of their lunch. And I think Michel has lots of memories to share. So we're going to hear some of that, I hope. Thanks a lot, Dan. Uh, yeah, so so I will talk about uh, work that started a long time ago, even before my time, uh, but I'm still uh, sort of working on at the moment. And as far as I know, I, I try to, to to sort of find, describe how it started, as far as I understand it. So uh, it, it 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 began basically with Aaron winning the Nobel Prize in 1982. Uh, and the story, this is what Aaron told me himself, is that uh, Martin Roth, who was the head of the Department of Psychiatry at the university here in Cambridge, um, he never met Aaron before, but he read about the Nobel Prize in a newspaper. And he, you know, and, and Aaron was electron microscopy and, 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 and Roth sort of uh, worked on Alzheimer's disease and had sort of structures in it. And so he contacted uh, Aaron uh, and, and, and proposed to, to find out collaboratively what the paired helical filaments of Alzheimer's disease uh, are made of and, and what the structure is. And this led then to a meeting uh, between Aaron, Tony Krauser and Roth. And this, as far as I know, was the beginning uh, of this work. So this was around 1983. And uh, I became part of this a few years later and uh, as, as, as Jan said this morning, this, this work is still going on uh, in, in, in the lab at the moment. Now, the paired helical filament of uh, Alzheimer's disease is uh, the major component of the tangle. And Alzheimer's disease is defined by plaques and tangles neuropathologically. And uh, the tangles can be seen by light microscopy, but the uh, paired helical filament uh, can only be seen by uh, electron microscopy. And the paired helical filament was first described by Michael Kidd uh, in London in 1963. Now, Roth was professor of psychiatry here, but before he was in Newcastle uh, University. And together with uh, Brian Blessed and Bernard Tomlinson, uh, they described the, the prevalence of plaques and tangles. And first slide shows you this. So these are plaques and tangles in a, uh, in a silver stain section from a patient with Alzheimer's. This doesn't work. Uh, so the plaque is this round thing you see there, which is extracellular, and the uh, tangle are these uh, things uh, here, for instance, and down there, uh, which at least uh, start out uh, in inside nerve cells. And uh, the work of Blessed, Tomlinson, and Roth uh, was essential for the uh, extension of the concept of Alzheimer's disease. So initially, uh, it was thought only to be true of rare cases of pre-senile dementia, uh, and that you had this pathology, and they show that, that, that this was not true, that it, the much more common forms of senile dementia uh, also had it. Now, Tony Crowder and Claude Wischick were central to the initial work uh, on this at the LMB, and that this, was some, this work was summarized in two articles published in 1985, the first in Journal of Cell Biology and the second in Ember Journal. And... Um, Wischig at the time, uh, so Wischig started originally uh, with uh, Roth in the psychiatry department, but he became a PhD student 
at the LMB and uh, Crowther was his uh, supervisor. And so what they showed in the, this is the uh, Journal of Cell Biology paper, they showed that the PHF consists of the uh, two strands of subunits interwound uh, in the left-handed uh, double helix. And in the Ember Journal paper, uh, they suggested that each PHF is made of a double helical stack of two identical C-shaped uh, protofilaments. Now the work in, in Journal of Cell Biology was done uh, together with uh, Murray Stewart and Roth, where the, the, the work in Ember Journal was just Crowther and, uh, and Bushy. Now I joined the LMB in 1984 uh, when I became part of uh, what was then the director's section uh, as, as a postdoc paid from core by Sidney Brenner. And uh, at the time I was mostly working on uh, nerve growth factor and uh, I published a paper on its messenger RNA levels in Alzheimer's disease. I didn't know Aaron at all at the time. And Aaron saw this paper at an Elsevier stand at a meeting in Switzerland. And uh, then after that, we talked. And in about 1987, I became part of a team, of the team that was supposed to find out what the uh, struck, what the periodical filaments are made of chemically, which was not known at the time. And it was one of the things that, uh, that Ross had said uh, one, one, one should work on. Now, Aaron had by then become director of the LMB, so this was now 1987, and Sydney uh, was the head of the MRC Molecular Genetics Unit. The director section was disbanded, didn't exist anymore. Now, over the next 25 years, Aaron was an important influence on my life. And I, I remember uh, well how pleased he was uh, when, when, when he told Max Perutz uh, that we had identified alpha synuclein in the Lewy bodies of Parkinson's disease and uh, dementia of Lewy bodies. And for many years, we spoke pretty much every day about all sorts of things. And, and I must say, I, I, I really missed these conversations, uh, which were, uh, well, very important for me for many years. Now, we agreed that science cannot tell how one should lead one's life. Um, and Aaron was, as a person, I would say he was not an ideologue. He was more of a sort of uh, pragmatic realist, if I can describe him that way. And the breadth and depth of his interests and, and knowledge were, were astounding. So they encompassed all sorts of things, you know, philosophy and religion, history, literature, politics, arts, and other, other disciplines. He seemed to know a lot about pretty much uh, everything, but I must say he knew absolutely nothing about football. <laughs> Um, and, and in the early 1980s, it must have been like 1982 or so, uh, I, I went to a lecture in town given by the, it's probably still well-known artist, uh, Josef Beuys. Uh, and I must say, I was surprised uh, to see Aaron and Liebe at this lecture. I had believed that Beuys was not known very well outside uh, German-speaking countries. Now, in the limited time I have, I, I can only give a few glimpses of the conversations uh, uh, Aaron and I had. So a, a frequent person we talked about was um, Sigmund Freud. Um, and Aaron told me that Freud's mother uh, called him mein goldener Ziggy, which means my golden Ziggy, and that she loved him unconditionally. And the next slide shows you mother and son when Freud was 16 years old. And Aaron believed that, that, that this uh, bond, strong bond, accounted for Freud's uh, strong belief in himself, which he must have had, uh, considering all the opposition he had to face. And, and motivation in science was another frequent topic. And as Daniela already said, uh, Aaron, Aaron was of the view that curiosity uh, was the, the most uh, motivating uh, force uh, in science, but probably also in, in sort of creative uh, undertakings in life in general. Aaron also introduced me to W.H. Auden's poem of September 1939, entitled In Memory of Sigmund Freud. So this was shortly after Freud's death. And you have sort of highlighted here in, in red uh, two quotes. So. When, when talking about Freud's uh, enemies, Auden wrote, they are still alive, but in a world he changed. 
This was something Aaron strongly approved about. And Aaron also approved of the, of the other quoted saying, to us, he's no more a person now, but a whole climate of opinion. Aaron paid great attention to detail. And, and, and there are probably not many scientific papers that start with a literary epigraph, which you have here. This was a paper uh, published in 1987 by Daniel Altschu, Arthur Lesk, and Bloomer and Aaron in Journal of Molecular Biology. And it carries a quote from Stardal's novel, uh, Lucien Leuven, which reads, this is Aaron's handwriting, you can see down there, uh, which reads uh, in English, give us more details, there is no novelty and truth in anything uh, but the details. And give us more details. I mean, he said to his son, and that says again, give us more details. There is no novelty and truth in anything but the details. And, and as Danielle already said, uh, Aaron often said, not many people know this. And then often there's some sort of obscure detail that came after it, which uh, probably we didn't need to know really. Now, the, the periodical filament of, of Alzheimer's disease is, is defined by its appearance. So it has, no, it has no intrinsic biological activity and purification uh, of the filaments entails a loss of morphology, uh, uh, meaning that electron microscopy alone uh, cannot, uh, cannot be used to identify integral filament components. And one therefore requires a label uh, that, that identifies filaments in microscopy and protein bands from purified uh, tangle preparations in gel electrophoresis. And uh, Michel Novak and Cesar Milstein, uh, they were producing monoclonal antibodies against purified tangle fragments. And uh, Ross Jakes, Wischig, and Crowder then showed by electron microscopy that in particular antibody called 6423 uh, decorated pronase treated uh, paired helical filaments isolated from tangled fragments. Uh, the same antibody also labeled a 12, 12 kilodalton band by immunoblotting. And John Walker um, obtained a partial amino acid sequence of this band, and, and which I then used to clone and sequence uh, cDNAs from a human uh, brain library. And, and, and the amino acid sequence I used to design the oligonucleotide uh, probes that uh, work best was uh, QIVYKP. This is so interesting for people working on this in this area, because this sequence is now known to be essential for the assembly of tau into uh, filaments. Now the predicted amino acid sequence of 52 amino acids was unlike that of any known uh, protein, but RNA blotting suggested uh, that it might correspond to an isoform of tau. So we had a cDNA probe from mouse, from Mark Kirshner, and on western blots, sorry, on, on northern blots, this gave exactly the same uh, banding pattern as obtained with this, uh, with this uh, clone that I had isolated. And so that it was almost certain, well, was tau was confirmed with the publication of the predicted amino acid sequence of mouse tau by uh, Gloria Lee, Nick Cowan, and Mark Kirshner in January 1988. And, and, and part of this uh, sequence had been read over the telephone uh, to Aaron, who called Mark Kirshner who was very suspicious of his call, but uh, in the end, he, he, he read him part of the sequence over the telephone in late 1987, so several months before the publication. Now these tau isoforms contain three repeats, each 31 or 32 amino acids in length, and the repeats are part of the microtubule binding region of tau, and they play an important role in its physiological function. However, a gain of toxic function uh, which has to do with the ordered assembly of tau into filaments is almost certainly uh, what underlies the uh, human tau uh, diseases. Now, although there have been several studies reporting the presence of tau-like immunoreactivity in neurofibrillary tangles, the first by Jean-Pierre Brion and colleagues in 1985, uh, our work proved that tau is an integral component of paired helical filaments. And tau filaments consist of two parts, the core and the fuzzy coat. The core region corresponds to the tau sequence that it required for a filament to look like a filament. And the fuzzy coat is basically uh, the rest of the, uh, of the tau sequence. Now we presented these findings at the Banbury uh, Conference on the Molecular Biology of Alzheimer's Disease, which was organized by Chuck Finch and Peter Davies, and which took place in April, 1988. And this was my first meeting on Alzheimer's disease. And it was sort of memorable 
uh, for several reasons, but one of them had to do with Aaron's remarks. So during the flight to New York, uh, Aaron read and memorized a paper that had been published in Ambo Journal in 1985 that purported to show that beta amyloid uh, was a major component of the neurofibrillary tangus of Alzheimer's disease. And I spoke first, followed by Wishik and Aaron. And Aaron put our work into perspective and then did a solid demolition job of the Ambo Journal paper. The first author of which was in the audience. And the paper I let's put it here. This is the paper. The paper proposed a model of the paired helical filament based on it being made of beta amyloid. And Aaron said, and they, 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 they showed this sort of uh, you know, model at the end, which looked, it looked a bit, little bit like a Christmas tree. And Aaron said, you call this a structural model. I call it a structural fantasy. And afterwards, Aaron said to me, sometimes, you know, he said, sometimes you have to do the dirty job. And this was my first experience of Aaron the fighter. So he, 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 he was going to stand his ground on, on several subsequent occasions as well. Then our papers demonstrating that tau protein is an integral component of tango filaments uh, were published in June and July 1988. You can see them here. Uh, and, and we then went on to identify the six tau isoforms that are expressed in, in adult human brain from a single gene by alternative messenger RNA splicing and the big tau isoform characteristic of the peripheral nervous system, you can see here. Um, and three of the six brain tau isoforms have uh, three repeats each. So these are these three R isoforms and three have uh, four repeats each. And they also differ by the presence or absence of two amino terminal inserts shown here in, uh, in red and green. Now paired helical filaments make up around 80% of tau filaments in Alzheimer's disease. And, and, and with approximately 20% of filaments uh, being straight. And in 1991, uh, Tony Crowther showed that uh, straight and paired helical filaments have a common structural unit. So the paired helical filament is this thing uh, that goes up, and the uh, horizontal one is the uh, is the straight uh, the straight filament. In 1992, we showed that uh, all six types of forms are present in the paired helical filaments uh, and straight filaments of Alzheimer's disease, uh, and and other people later showed that tau filaments from Pick's disease have only three repeat tau. And, 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 and from uh, progressive supranuclear palsy, cortical basal degeneration, they only have four repeat tau isoforms uh, in the filaments. Um, from the beginning, um, Aaron saw the work on, on tau as a means towards understanding uh, the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease, not as an, as an end in itself. And it was therefore important to to go beyond what, what this so far has been sort of mere sort of product, uh, product analysis and product description. And so over the years, the relevance of tau pathology for the neurodegenerative process was repeatedly questioned. And, and this was largely due to a lack of a known link between uh, the tau gene and neurodegeneration in humans. And this phenomenon is also known as mutation envy, with echoes of Freud. Uh, identification of mutations in the tau gene in familial forms of frontotemporal dementia uh, in, in, and by us and others in, in June 1998, sorry, uh, proved that this function of tau is sufficient uh, to cause neurodegeneration and dementia, with the formation of tau filaments being the likely gain of toxic function underlying all of these tauopathies. And Aaron was an author on uh, this paper here. Uh, by Spilantini and colleagues, which identified a causative mutation in intron 10 of the tau gene in one of these uh, familiar cases, and which also demonstrated that this mutation uh, leads to the relative overproduction of 4-EP tau. Now, discussions with Aaron and Kyoshi Nagai were essential for our understanding of the effects of this intronic mutation. And with Aaron, we also reviewed our work on several occasions. Um, the last time in 2006, uh, as part of the events marking the 100th anniversary of the description of the case of uh, Auguste Data by uh, Auguste Alzheimer. And this photograph is uh, taken at 2006 for one of these, uh, one of these reviews. So work on Alzheimer's disease uh, here at the LMB began 
with the structure of the paired helicofilaments and the quest for its molecular components. And Aaron, Aaron used to call this the nub of the problem. That was one of his uh, favorite expressions on this. And in 1988, we showed that tau repeats are an integral component of the paired helicofilament core. However, it was not possible to relate uh, the tau sequence uh, to this core. And in July 2017, this became reality when we reported the high resolution structures of paired helical and straight filaments uh, of Alzheimer's disease. And this work used single particle electron cryomicroscopy and took advantage of advances in specimen preparation electron detection and image processing and many of these techniques were developed uh, were developed here now it is often said that that here you know at the lmb we are expected to work on uh, long-term problems now, it took 29 years from the identification of tau as an integral component uh, of the paired helical filament to the high resolution structure of the filament core and i hope this qualifies as uh, studying a long-term problem now, our ongoing work on the cryo-EM structures uh, of amyloid filaments from brain is carried out uh, in uh, collaboration with a group of uh, Shaw's uh, sharers. And, and here in the next slide, you can see the Alzheimer paired helical filament in blue here and the straight filament in, uh, in green at something like three angstrom resolution or so. And each filament type is made of the same two protofilaments. Uh, with different interfaces between them. We also refer to paired helical and straight tau filaments as ultrastructural polymers. Now, the protofilament comprises eight uh, beta strands, which give rise to two antiparallel beta sheets and three beta strands, that is beta uh, four, five, and six, uh, give rise to a, a so-called beta helix. The Alzheimer fold is found in Alzheimer's disease and in posterior cortical atrophy, which is a subtype uh, of Alzheimer's disease. It is also found in some prion protein amyloidosis, in familiar British and Danish dementias, and in primary age related tauopathy. So, the, all these conditions have also uh, tau inclusions, at least in some cases. The filament core comprises, repeats three and four of the uh, microtubule binding region, as well as 10 to 13 amino acids after repeat four. And the C termini of repeats one and two uh, are also present. Uh, in these cores, which explains why all six tau isoforms are present in disease filaments. And over the past uh, five years or so, we've determined the cryo structures of tau filaments from a large number of other uh, human diseases. And this has given uh, rise to a, a structure-based classification of disease uh, that com complements clinical diagnosis and neuropathology and allows identification of new disease entities. But I'm afraid I do not have enough time uh, to describe this, uh, this in detail. So what do we mean by a conformer? So we define a conformer as having a specific structure uh, of uh, the ordered filament core. And so far, it looks like that each tauopathy, so each disease with filamentous star inclusions, is characterized by its own filament conformation, but, but that some tauopathies share uh, the same conformation. And differences in conformation are between some diseases not between individuals with a given disease. So if you have 10 people with Alzheimer's disease, they all have the same uh, tau fold, uh, which we call the Alzheimer fold. 10 people with progressive supranuclear palsy, they all have the same uh, fold, progressive supranuclear palsy, which is different uh, from, the, uh, from the Alzheimer fold. Now, in future, it is important to get recombinant tau to assemble into filaments with the same structures as those from human brain. And this is essential for understanding uh, mechanisms of assembly. And existing methods for the assembly of Poulenc's tau into filaments give different structures uh, from those found in human brain. And Sophia Loverstam, uh, she has recently shown that a fragment of tau corresponding to residues 297 to 391, and this is um, shown here, uh, of recombinant tau assemblies into paired helical filaments. And it's interesting to note that this fragment is basically identical to the 12 kilodalton tau band that Wishik and colleagues uh, reported back in 1988. Uh, however, since the, the paired helical filament is made of full length tau, uh, the challenge is now to get full length recombinant tau to, uh, to form the, uh, the Alzheimer fold. And, and just uh, toward the end, I want to say that what can be done for tau can also be done for other filamentous assemblies. 
associated with neurodegenerative diseases. So earlier this year, we reported the cryogen structures of uh, a beta, this beta amyloid 42 filaments from the membrane. <laughs> And we also showed two years ago those of alpha synuclein filaments uh, from the uh, from the brains of individuals with multiple system atrophy, and we are now working uh, on the cryogenic structures of alpha synuclein filaments from uh, Parkinson's disease and uh, dementia uh, with Lewy bodies, uh, and 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 we believe that the structures of those filaments are different from those of multiple system atrophy. And to finish, I just want to mention that. Uh, how pleased uh, both Lieber and Aaron were on August the 11th, uh, 2017, which was Aaron's 91st birthday, uh, when, when they heard about our paper on the cryogenic structures of tau films from the uh, brain of an individual with Alzheimer's disease that had been published the previous month. Uh, and this, in, in, in many ways, this paper marked the, the culmination of the, uh, of the work that Aaron had started uh, 34 years earlier. And I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michel, for sharing this fantastic journey and memories on the way. Do we have a question? Maybe one? Yeah. Yes, so it's normally through these microtubule binding repeats, it binds to microtubules and, and it probably stabilizes microtubules as a result and pro probably promotes microtubule assembly as well. But we believe that that has nothing to do with the diseases which we believe are gain of toxic function. 